Thank you, Angel. You got a couple of questions on the about your presentation that you will be able to replay on at the end of the webinar. Okay, well, so this is now my turn to talk about market drivers and expected trends which are combining results from tasks uh, two and four and advancing some uh, conclusions we have in a task uh, we are under undergoing in uh, working package eight, which uh, regards to uh, marketing in general, a strategic, a strategic business plan for the, for the companies. Well, uh, summarizing the main results of uh, the tasks uh, focus on uh, market equilibrium and uh, demand analysis. Uh, we have found that uh, uh, the demand in, uh, in the bus and brim uh, market is uh, price elastic, which means that there is a strong sensitivity to price. Uh, well, this is well known and is evidenced by the cyclical evolution of sales according to prices. Whenever the prices rise, uh, demand immediately steps back. So what it is a uh, uh, property, what this characteristic is uh, telling us is that we are in a common competitive market with very low product differentiation. For a, con a consumer at the at the marketplace, there is not much difference between different alternatives of uh, different alternatives of uh, fish compared with uh, sea bream, especially white fish, and mainly with other sources of uh, farmed uh, sea bream or farmed sea bass. Right? Well, uh, the consequence is, uh, as we evidenced, a strong substitution effect means that uh, a farm seed green can be easily substituted with other uh, products, which uh, other products, especially we focus on the most, on the closer uh, potential substitutes. And we found that uh, another evidence is that uh, a locally farm, uh, locally farm uh, seed green can be substituted by an imported seed green. We also found that is a strong substitution between exports from different countries when they are targeting uh, international markets. And uh, not just the, uh, that uh, one company or one country can substitute another with uh, Sibas or Sibrim, we also found a strong substitution between Sibas and Sibrim. So, in, and sometimes this uh, causes. Uh, the limitation of growth uh, for uh, one of the species is given by the growth of the other. Excuse me, Pepe. Sorry, I interrupted, but uh, there is no presentation. Is that what you want to do, or? Oh, sorry, no. Sorry, I might not. You, we have a presentation from you. Yes, so, um, I, so I do. Sorry. Sorry, that's so okay. sorry. Uh, okay, here it is. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dolores. It's in working mode right now. Okay. Perfect. Well, now. Plasticity yeah. substitution effect. And one effect, uh, uh, elasticity effect, but it's not always uh, included in uh, the analysis of uh, market equilibrium, which is the income elasticity. This is really important in, in our case because uh, income elasticity provides us the base to which we can revert some of the effects coming or uh, observed or uh, derived from the price and substitution, price elasticity and substitution effects. Income elasticity is uh, the way in which uh, quantities sold react on changes in the income. And uh, we found that this is a, a positive effect in, uh, in the models, in the econometric models, meaning that 
the higher the disposable income, the bigger consumption of uh, Sibas uh, and Sibrin, uh, which means that people is willing to pay a premium for a product where they found that uh, counterpart in terms of quality. Having a positive uh, income elasticity means that we can find segments in the market. So we, there are consumers that they would be willing to pay a premium. So there are consumers that they are more focused on quality than on, uh, than on price, for which uh, and they represent segments in the market which different price elasticity, which is the, the, the technical definition of a, of a market segment, right? A group of consumers with a lower sen uh, price sensitivity than the general consumers. So income elasticity opens the opens the, the gates, the door, for considering a value-added strategy, a value-oriented strategy for escaping of to the, let's say, a slavery of price, we can focus on this part of the market, the specific consumer segments, which are appreciating value, find value in the products of Sibas and Sibrim, and they are willing to pay a premium for it. So our first strategic recommendation is to improve the knowledge about segments, about the uh, market segments. Uh, there are a lot of work done identifying uh, different uh, preferences of, uh, in consumers uh, for uh, fish in general and aquaculture in, uh, in particular. And uh, most of them are uh, limited to the description of the segments. So we have people who have these characteristics and they have uh, more favorable uh, attitudes and preferences to aquaculture uh, products, to farm fish, uh, but we need to go farther. So um, research in the future needs to go farther and make accurate estimate, estimations in terms of business, especially size and value. So how big these segments are and what is the net worth of these, uh, of these uh, segments in terms of sales and profits? Then segments need to be ranked according to profitability. And uh, it is very unlikely that uh, a company can target all the, all the segments, but the, the industry in general can. So there will be... This is not, uh, when we talk about uh, recommendations for, an, uh, for uh, an industry, we need to take care and we must be very, very cautious that we have companies with, very, with different characteristics. We have big companies, medium companies, small companies, companies folks focus on uh, local markets, companies that are focused on the international markets, companies who, which face more competition or lower competition. So uh, my opinion is that, okay, a company cannot target all the potential segments in the market, but this, the, the industry certainly can target those segments right? uh, by different segments targeted by different companies. When the, when the segment is, or the profitable segments are identified, the next step is to provide these segments with the corresponding product. So the most profitable segments demand differentiated products. They demand value-added products. I am willing to pay more for something because I am receiving more. So I'm giving more money for more quality. Quality is, remember, is a, consider that it's a quite wide concept. So quality can be uh, referred to taste, but can also be refer to uh, convenience. So quality can be referred also to uh, uh, concepts that goes beyond the fact of uh, cooking and eating, such as, for example, protect the environment. So a sustainable product is uh, 
has more quality than an unsustainable product because it allows me having uh, the, the chance of uh, enjoying the product for longer and concepts like this. So it is also important to identify what are the attributes that the segments are valuing. So what are the attributes of the product which produce value? So in, uh, in task four, we have identified some of these uh, values and they are mostly related with convenience, production systems, and place of origin. Place of origin is, uh, is uh, especially uh, effective in uh, uh, net importing countries, such as uh, the case of Spain uh, or Italy, where we found that the, uh, the country of origin label, the local production la label, uh, has a positive impact on demand, especially on prices, prices and, and, and demand. And finally, the, the attributes need to be uh, developed the attributes and the corresponding marketing to these uh, attributes, to these differentiated products. Well, this is uh, in the line of the work uh, done by your colleagues in uh, Working Package 5, that we have uh, indeed identified segments and uh, test some differentiated products. And it's not the first time in ad almost two decades that this kind of strategy is recommended to the Sibas uh, and Sibrim industry. So something says, and if this is not the main trend in, uh, in marketing in, in this industry, it means that something is failing here, something is missing maybe. And uh, we are pointing two aspects that probably are being missing when these uh, kind of strategies are proposed. Sorry, the first one is that uh, a differentiated strategy requires uh, investments, requires uh, sufficient investments. And uh, not just uh, having money, but being very efficient in, produ in production. Differentiation increases the costs of uh, at least the cost of uh, marketing and in many many cases when we talk about especially inconvenience they also increase the costs of production the post harvest costs uh, so uh, companies need to have uh, uh, enough economies of scale an optimal dimension so concentration in supply is critical it's critical for uh, achieving this uh, economies of scales, whether on the production size or whether on the marketing size. Otherwise, this, the, the result is that, okay, I have a higher price, but maybe I also have also higher costs. And at the end, it, it does not, uh, it, that, it, it doesn't worth uh, increasing my prices uh, if I am increasing the costs. If, because with a constant margin, if I, if I have the same margin with a non-differentiated product, I am always uh, at, the, at the expenses of uh, potential contractions of demand, which will affect my prices. And uh, if my costs are higher with the sending prices, the probability of incurring in losses increases. So it's critical, it's very important to have enough volume to deal with enough volume, if not in production, at least in market. And on the other side, managing uh, and marketing large volumes of, of uh, product improves the bargainability of the companies. This is another, another important uh, result we have, that differentiation improves bargain, bargainability in the value chain. So uh, allowing price transmission in the value chain. Price transmission in the value chain must be in play. So when I increase my costs as a producer, I must have the ability of transferring this increasing cost to the market in the form of increasing prices. Uh, if price transmission is not operating, I might increase my cost without, without having the ability of recovering my investment by the mechanism of price. So, 
another important requirement. We operate, or this kind of companies operates in large supply chains with a lot of uh, actors uh, participating. And uh, if I want my differentiated product with a higher uh, price, because it's a premium price, succeeding in the market, I need the implication of the value chain. I cannot act uh, alone from, uh, from the starting node and expecting that my product will be uh, accepted by the market or my product will reach the final consumers if I don't have some kind of complicity with the following actors, the downstream agents in the supply chain. So the recommendation is to strengthen the context partnerships, alliances, or whatever with the value chain. Uh, some <clears throat> previous work uh, has recommended uh, integration. So in, in increase uh, integration of, of uh, production uh, producers, so vertical downstream integration. Well, this will uh, certainly increase the costs. Um, we have uh, processes, uh, undergoing processes of uh, supply concentration in, in, in the market and uh, some attempts of uh, vertical integration. Uh, but also we have a strong uh, efforts and uh, actions of uh, upstream vertical integration, not from, the, not from uh, on the size of producer, but on the size of retailers. So uh, big companies can deal with big companies. Also small companies can deal with the small companies in the, in the local markets, but the participation and the implication and the involvement in the marketing of the product, and even in production by uh, sharing information on consumer needs or uh, customers needs with, uh, with producers becomes also critical if we want this uh, differentiated uh, strategy based on the value addition might have any success in the market. Otherwise, it will be, if not impossible, it will be very, very difficult. Well, so a differentiated strategy, escaping from the uh, tyranny of price or uh, the uh, slavery of price competition <clears throat> requires investments. So, what is the situation today in order to uh, undertake these investments and undertake this, this effort? Well, probably it's not the best. So I am so sorry, but uh, two years ago, we could, uh, I could say, well, it might be a good uh, moment for uh, uh, making some investments. And uh, it was a period with... Uh, good uh, results or, uh, in, in the industry, but then COVID-19 arrived and COVID-19 obviously shocked uh, the economy in general and uh, aquaculture in particular. Uh, well, in the slide, you can see what are the main effects of uh, pandemics on the economies. Uh, and uh, you can go back in time to any uh, pandemic episode which have been uh, studied from this on the on the optics of uh, the economic theory and you will find all these impacts okay so mainly summarizing we have decreased productivity and uh, increased cost which cause uh, that profitability decreases companies incurring losses, and uh, this causes a contraction in supply. At the same time, we have a contraction in demand, considering the, in the case of uh, the, fisheries, the fishing industry and aquaculture, uh, the immediate contraction in, in demand was, uh, is connected with lockdowns in the hospitality industry. And the uh, contraction in supply causes increases in market prices. So we know that uh, for the information, uh, actually the figures are uh, coming, uh, are start coming now, but 
some estimations on uh, this year uh, within the aquaculture economics group of the of the scientific technical and economic committee of fisheries of the european commission talk about decreases in total income of uh, around 11 12 percent in in total aquaculture total european aquaculture eight percent in marine aquaculture and increases of costs of around five percent well these decreases in sales and price causes uh, decreases on the incomes of the companies uh, and uh, of course uh, in decreases in profitability so we have companies that will pass to low or negative profitabilities and uh, <clears throat> even there are differences across segments and uh, across species and countries and these figures are general of, uh, of uh, they are combined all the european uh, aquaculture we have uh, some data some uh, provided by uh, by producers and uh, associations of producers in the media which uh, point to decreases of uh, production and sales of around uh, from uh, 10 to 20 percent in uh, in the case of Sibas and Sibri. so this is these are relevant uh, decreases which uh, for probably are uh, having uh, negative impacts or most likely are having negative impacts on the uh, on the profitability of the companies <clears throat> and most likely have caused uh, a decrease uh, in production or will cause a decrease in production in the following years as uh, farmers need to see it with the uh, current conditions, with today conditions, they see the they see today for uh, the the harvest of the following two years. Excuse me, Pepe, you have to yes. um, speed up because we are. Yes, are I am. I am. I am concluding. It's just uh, yes. just a couple a couple minutes. Okay, so contraction in supply causes an increase in the in the price, and remember, uh, even we have a. Uh, uh, positive uh, income effect uh, as we rise the price demand contracts demand uh, decreases and uh, we are not sure how uh, well how well will be the the net worth of consumers because uh, right now in uh, in europe most uh, we have a uh, we have smoothed the the decline in labor with uh, public uh, public support but uh, we don't know what is going to be the the situation in the in the following months so we can also expect not just by the fact of uh, increasing prices but we can expect also a contraction in uh, in uh, in demand so the income of uh, of the companies will be will decrease as explained in this week pass from this income to this smaller income and it will depend whether this cycle will continue or will be adjusted in 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 the short term so this will certainly affect the liquidity of companies and their ability for investment so we have some scenarios so uh, scenarios for developing this uh, differentiated structure we might have companies with high debt level and constrained cash flow. These companies will not be able to undertake the investment, the required investments of uh, concentration in supply, uh, market uh, research, and product innovation or product differentiation. Companies with a moderate debt level and constrained cash flow consider that uh, constrained cash flow means that. Uh, you are funding your uh, costs with uh, your immediate sales, with your immediate incomes. So there is not much uh, left money for uh, experiments. And at the end of the day, uh, uh, starting a new strategy is always an experiment. Nothing is written, nothing is said that it is going to, to succeed. 
<clears throat> well, but at least if, if the debt is not so high, these companies could invest, could make the investment at the cost of increasing debt. Well, it, uh, it is a very risky position. So, because if they delay on, on getting uh, the returns of the, if the payback are uh, so long, if the delay in returning the, the investments, uh, then they will, they probably will be in the previous situation. So high debt and constrained class cash flow. And finally, we might have uh, companies uh, with uh, moderate debt. So they are not uh, to push by loans and they can have some, uh, of course, they must have a positive profit and liquidity. Of liquidity, so they can fund their uh, potential investments in uh, in the development of a new strategy with their own uh, funds, with external resources, whether in the in the in the form of uh, of capital uh, capital increases or whether in the form of uh, loans. So uh, let's say that only companies in well position only companies uh, with uh, enough uh, optimal dimension and uh, optimal financial situation will be able or are able to develop these differentiating strategies. I have to uh, recall that uh, I said that we have companies of many kinds. So differentiated strategy is not limited to large companies well, uh, large companies, but also they can work in the small scale, especially focused on local markets. So, but it doesn't matter. So uh, if they are large or small, there is a potentiality also of a, a differentiated strategy for a small scale in, in, in aquaculture. But anyway, they need to be in a, optimal position in terms of financials right they need to have the enough liquidity and the enough financial uh, strength in order to go on with this uh, with these strategies okay this is uh, all i can say about this uh, market analysis and uh, the advance of uh, the strategical uh, state of the art and uh, I conclude my uh, presentation and pass the turn to Jose Luis.